Miis have always been one of the weirdest but coolest things Nintendo has ever created. Having the ability to create an avatar of yourself, or well just about anybody, and be able to play as and use those Miis in a variety of games was so fun. Their simple and charming designs made them so lovable. You could spend hours in the Wii's Mii Maker just messing around and seeing what you could create. And some games featuring Miis even started giving them entire worlds to live in, like Wii Sports Resort's incredibly iconic Woohoo Island. But out of every single Mii game that's ever been released, there's one that took these lovable avatars to their absolute limit, and created one of the most silly and charming games Nintendo has ever made, Tomodachi Life. This game is one I poured hours into on my 3DS when it first came out, and in honor of this year being the 10 year anniversary of the game's initial release in Japan, I want to take a look back on it and truly see what made it such an amazing game, and why I feel it deserves a sequel on the Switch. My name is Mario Mikester, and welcome to a Tomodachi Life Retrospective. Initially released on April 18th, 2013 in Japan, and later localized and released worldwide on June 6th, 2014, Tomodachi Life is a game all about interacting with and watching your Miis live out their day-to-day -day lives on your island. Interestingly enough though, Tomodachi Life on the 3DS isn't actually the first Tomodachi game Nintendo has made. In 2008, a game called Tomodachi Collection was released for the DS exclusively in Japan. This game plays almost identically to its 3DS counterpart, and set the groundwork for what Tomodachi Life would eventually be. I'm honestly really surprised that this game was never released outside of Japan. We're turning back to Tomodachi Life though, this game was also never meant to release outside of Japan, hence the over a year long gap between its Japanese and worldwide release. Once they did decide to localize the game and release it worldwide though, the team really struggled with making things like the dialogue feel natural and relevant to players around the world. It wasn't just a simple matter of translating the Japanese into other languages. There are tons of changes across multiple different regions and languages in order to make the game appeal to as many people as possible. One of the most notorious examples of the changes Tomodachi Life received across releases can be seen in the North American release of the game, where the minigame Sumo Wrestling was reskinned and changed to football to appeal to Western audiences. Upon opening the game for the first time, you're met with a completely empty island, and a text box reading, Here sits a little island in the middle of the ocean. This place is all yours, it just needs a name. After naming your island, you're then prompted to make a me lookalike of yourself, who will start their new life here as the first official islander. This? This is where the real fun starts. The heart of Tomodachi life is without a doubt the me's you populate the island with. In this Mii Maker, not only can you obviously create the Mii you want to add to your island, but you also get to name them, give them the nickname that they'll be referred to by, give them their own voice, and even give them an entire personality that will reflect how they act. There is so much that goes into adding just one Mii to your island, and it really makes each one feel unique. You have so much freedom with things like how your Mii's voice will sound. I remember I used to just mess around with the voice settings and see how goofy I could make some of my Mii's sound. The personality settings allow you to give your me genuine characteristics, and heavily affects who they get along with, how they talk, how they move around, and even what type of clothing they like. And after making your first me, you finally get access to the central hub of the game, the apartment building. At first, this place is practically empty, only featuring your lookalike me. But as time goes on and you add more and more me's to your island, this place starts to look a lot more lively and eventually even gets more floors added to it if you add enough Mii's. And I mean, on the topic of adding Mii's to your island, one of the greatest things about Tomodachi Life was that you didn't have to manually design every one yourself. By going online, you can find QR codes of specific Mii's people have made and add them to your island. And once you added these Mii's, you still got to name them, give them a voice, and add their personality. You could add Mii's of characters like Walter White, Peter Griffin, and even Freddy Fazbear and give them the proper voice and personality that reflects them, and have them just live on your island. It is so fun to check on these Mii's and see what they're up to. Speaking of checking up on your Mii's though, I absolutely love how much interaction and charm there is here. You see, the main gameplay loop of Tomodachi Life is all about solving Mii's problems and building their relationships with other Mii's on the island. 
When you visit a Mii's apartment, the bottom screen of your 3DS will display, well, the Mii in their apartment. But the top screen, on the other hand, holds a bunch of important information about your Mii. You have their happiness level that goes up when you solve a problem they have or give them something they like, and goes down if you give them a food or clothing item they dislike. You have a tab on the left chronicling what foods they like that you find out randomly by just feeding them things. You have their stomach which shows you how hungry they are. You have two tabs which show you who their best friend and partner is. And finally, in the bottom right, you have eight squares that contain the level up gifts you've given your me. There is so much fun to be had in just this aspect of the game alone. Upon visiting a me, they'll usually have a problem they want you to solve. These problems range from actual problems like being hungry or needing help finding something they lost, to uh, looking inside their head to see what they're thinking about. I really like how sometimes when you tap on a Mii's apartment to go visit them, there's a chance that they'll have the hiccups, and you entering their apartment scared them so much that you scared the hiccups right out of me. The game is full of little interactions like this that just give it so much life. And I mean, I can't talk about how much charm and life this game has without mentioning the food reactions Mii's have. You see, as I briefly mentioned before, Mii's are sometimes hungry and you obviously have to feed them. Usually when you feed a me something, they'll like it. But as your me tries more and more food, well, eventually this is bound to happen. This happens when a Mii is given their super all-time favorite food. I remember I was absolutely shocked when this happened for the first time, but not nearly as shocked as when I saw this for the first time. I'm not even joking when I tell you I thought my Mii died when I fed them something they hated for the first time. I really appreciate just how much went into making this game as goofy and silly as possible. And food isn't the only thing you can give your me. You can also give them clothes to wear that they may like or dislike, interiors for their apartments that you can actually tour in first person, and gifts like a sewing machine that they'll use to sew you an outfit, and even a Wii U that they'll set up in their apartment and play sometimes. There are so many unique things that you can give your Mii's in this game that you could just sit there for hours making your Mii's in their apartments look as cool as possible. And this core gameplay focus on decorating things and interacting with your islanders on a day-to-day -day basis has led a lot of people over the years to really notice the similarities between this game and the Animal Crossing games. I mean, when you really think about it, how different are they at a first glance? They both focus on completing tasks, talking with your residents, making things look nice, and don't really have an end goal in mind to them. But when you really dive deep into Tomodachi life, there is so much that differentiates the two. Sure their gameplay loops are pretty similar, and that is a perfectly fine thing to criticize, but Tomodachi life not only has such a strong focus on building friendships and even romantic relationships between your Mii's, something Animal Crossing doesn't have, Tomodachi Life is also all about adding literally anybody, whether it be a family member, friend, or character to your island, and trying your best to replicate them through the personality and voice options, clothing they wear, apartment interior they have, and so much more. While Animal Crossing has a focus on its set group of unique villagers and their charming predetermined personalities, as well as exploring your island, fishing, and paying off loans. And to me, all this stuff unique to Tomodachi Life and all the stuff unique to the Animal Crossing games makes them pretty different experiences, even if they do share some similarities. So while I do think comparing these games to one another is completely valid, I don't think it's at all fair to say one is a better version of the other. Stepping away from the apartment building though, there is so much more you can do on your island. For starters, you have the various stores on your island that you can buy things from, like the food mart, the hat store, the pawn shop, the clothing store, and the interior design shop. What's cool about these stores other than the fact that you can buy things from, and in the pawn shop's case sell to them, is that over time, their catalogs will increase and you'll have more and more things to buy. Along with that, you might occasionally see one of your Mii's working at one of these stores as their part-time job, which is a really cute little touch. And aside from the stores, you also have locations like the beach, where you can occasionally see, uh, 
this and play a game called Judgment Bay where you can draw options in the sand, like for example Mario or Sonic, and have your Miis choose between them, with you being able to tap on a Mii to see what they have to say. There's more than one correct answer. Okay, well, that seems a little biased. There's the fountain, where all your Miis donate some money to you at the start of every day, and even occasionally have rap battles. And there's the park, the cafe, the amusement park, Me News, and so many more places that just give you so much to do. I just love how alive these places make the island feel, especially when you have a ton of residents so almost every place is populated. It really makes it fun to simply just randomly open up the game one day and explore around and see what your Miis are up to. Out of every single location on the island though, there's one that's always stood out to me. The Concert Hall. The Concert Hall allows you to write songs and make specific Miis perform them in a particular genre. The way you unlock the ability to do this with Miis is by giving them a song genre as their level up gift. Messing around with the lyrics and genres here is a ton of fun. I have a Mii of Donkey Kong on my island and tried to get him to do a group performance of the DK rap, and it went, well... Here we go, we're finally here, performing for you, if you know the... What you can join in to, put your hands together, if you want to clap, as we take you through this monkey rap. Try to get Donkey Kong, okay Donkey Kong is here, okay Donkey Kong. I think the novelty of being able to do this has definitely died out especially with how far along AI voice technology has come. But for me, a lot of the charm from being able to do this nowadays definitely comes from how scuffed it sounds. Overall, the various different shops and locations you can visit on the island do a pretty good job at giving the island life, and offer tons of other things to do outside of the game's core gameplay loop of interacting with your Miis in their apartments every day. But Tomodachi Life isn't an entirely perfect game. As I briefly touched on earlier, Miis can form romantic relationships with one another in this game, with the player helping them out when they first ask a Mii to date them, and then again by completing this stressful minigame to get them to propose to their partner. Now at first glance, this seems great. It's just another way Tomodachi Life allows you to build relationships with your Miis. But the big issue here, and the thing that sparked a huge controversy that still surrounds the game till this day, is the inability to have same-sex relationships. You see, while Mies can form friendships with other Mies of any gender, they can only form romantic relationships with Mies of the opposite gender. So, to put it bluntly, uh, you can't be gay in this game, or bisexual, or anything other than straight. This obviously is an incredibly weird thing to have absent from a game that so strongly advertises its relationship aspect. I mean, they could have simply just added an extra box where you could specify what gender a Mie was interested in, if any. And it doesn't just stop there. When this game first released in Japan, there was a bug that allowed same-sex relationships to occur, and people all over Japan loved it, with many buying the game for the sole purpose of being able to form gay relationships. But to many surprise, Nintendo of Japan patched the bug mere days after it gained popularity. But the controversy surrounding this game still doesn't stop there. When Tomodachi Life was eventually localized and released worldwide a year later, Fans around the world were very disappointed by the inability to form same-sex relationships, and urged Nintendo to update the game and give players the ability to. In response to this, Nintendo released a very rushed out statement, saying that they never intended to make any sort of social commentary with the launch of Tomodachi Life, which was probably the worst response they could have possibly given. And upon realizing this, they released an apology for what they said earlier and stated that although they wouldn't be able to add the ability to have same-sex relationships in an update, as they believed it was too game-altering to be in a post-ship patch, they promised that if another Tomodachi game was ever made, they would without a doubt allow same-sex relationships. So while this resulted in a happy ending, with Nintendo acknowledging their mistake and promising to include gay relationships in the next Tomodachi game, it's hard to praise the romantic relationship and marriage aspect of this game when it has such a glaring issue. In the end though, I absolutely do not think this ruins the entire game. There is so much more to Tomodachi Life than just the relationship aspect of it. This game deserves to be remembered for all the amazing things it did, not the one bad thing. 
With pretty much all major aspects of Tomodachi life discussed, the last major thing I want to talk about in this video is the possibility of a sequel to the game on the Switch and how I think it could work. Within the last year or two, discussions surrounding an enhanced port or sequel to Tomodachi Life on the Switch have become incredibly prominent, especially after Miitopia got an enhanced port to Switch back in 2021. Personally, I think Tomodachi Life has a pretty good chance to get a sequel on Switch, even more so than an enhanced port. I think Nintendo porting Miitopia to the Switch was a test to see if people even cared about Mii games anymore. And due to the pretty decent success that game had for being a port of a 3DS game people didn't really even know about, and the backlash Nintendo faced in regards to how terribly the Miis were handled in Nintendo Switch Sports, I think it's pretty obvious to them that people still love the Miis and still love Tomodachi Life. A sequel on the Switch could take advantage of a ton of things. Imagine if Nintendo brought back something Street Pass-esque that encouraged people to take their Switch with them places and pass other people who also had this Tomodachi Life sequel in order to receive exclusive items like you could in the 3DS game. They could also introduce tons of new mini-games that you could play with your Miis that weren't possible on the 3DS. You could have motion control based games like maybe a Wii Sports inspired mini-game where your Mii would pitch you a ball and you would swing it to see how far it goes. This sequel could also introduce tons of new clothing options, hairstyle options, and just overall allow much more customization. There could even be celebrations for holidays. Imagine if Mii's dressed up in costumes on Halloween or something. The possibilities for how this sequel could improve upon and introduce more to the Tomodachi series are almost limitless. I'd genuinely be surprised if we don't see an announcement regarding an entry on the Switch in the coming years. Tomodachi Life is easily one of the most creative games on the 3DS. It's such a unique and charming experience that I genuinely believe anybody should try at least once if they're able to. Being able to add literally anybody on your island, give them a personality, voice, and unique clothing to wear is just such a silly concept that's executed incredibly well. Tomodachi Life may have its issues in regards to its romantic relationships that are definitely worth criticizing the game for, but there is so much more to the game. You can make me sing songs, hang out together, form friendships, participate in games, go on vacations. Hell, you can even make your Mii's go to space. I will always love Tomodachi Life for just how unique it is. This is a game that can always put a smile on your face. And while it may not be a perfect game, it's still a great one by a lot of standards. It's a game where everyone's experience is different. It's a game that will always keep surprising you, and most importantly, it's a game that is absolutely deserving of a sequel on Switch. 